Welcome to the Gospel Liberty Podcast. Thank you for joining us for another episode. We regularly send each other links of podcasts, videos, different clips, and you sent me a clip a couple weeks ago. This was the the day after Christmas, uh, a morning wire. That that's the Daily Wire's uh, daily news podcast, where they try to give a quick. Uh, hits on, on the news. We don't listen to it all the time. We don't endorse uh, everything the Daily Wire does by any means whatsoever. Uh, but you sent me this Morning Wire is a special one, and it was called Independent Play Among Children. And you just sent me the link without any commentary, and we ended up having the exact same response to it. What made you want to send me that that link? Um, yeah, I mean, I just, when I, when I, yeah, I listened to the whole podcast and, um, it was 12 minutes long. It's pretty short. If you want to go back and listen to it yourself, go listen to it for, Mm -hmm. yeah, listen to it for yourself. Um, yeah, I think it's just, I've had so many thoughts, which I was so excited to talk with you about it, which is why I sent it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that so often, so often people think that this is what you should do. You should let your kids have more independent play time. That, that was the thesis. Um, that was the, that of, of was the, the main yep. goal of it, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and oh, the Daily Wire, you know, hosts, you know, oh, had people on and were discussing it, and it seemed like they were, you know, in support. Obviously, mm-hmm. they they weren't, you know, saying oh that this is a bad thing. Look at society by any means. Mm-hmm. They they were more in support of it. Um, and again, we can get into the the, the specifics later. Mm-hmm. But overall, I, I don't think that that is is what you should have your you know kids just be going mm. off all the time for tons of independent play time um and that's that's the discussion that we're going to have today yes no exactly thanks for that great intro so i was laughing when i was listening to it because to me it was just very uh, extreme and um it was just the exact view of what the spirit of the age is it's mm-hmm. from a, i don't remember if he was a professor or some psychologist social scientist or psychologist yes. whatever it is i forget too but he was saying that kids need to be away from adults more and that parents have, he said, an irrational fear of kids being out of our sight. And he said, another quote he said, he said, parents believe that now it is their job to teach their children as if that's something bad. Yeah. He was saying, or so, new. We, or yeah, new that yeah, that's yes, something yeah. new that, oh, from for thousands of years that parents hadn't thought that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so if we just take this one at a time, uh, kids being away from parents, he was saying that kids need to be away from their parents mm-hmm. more and that this is a problem now that kids are around their parents too much. We laughed at that because from our perspective, it's Look literally the exact opposite. Completely. Yeah, kids are away from their parents so much. And because of that, that's one of the many reasons why kids seem to be less social, mm-hmm. less intelligent, uh, less considerate, uh, more uh, uh, rambunctious than they've ever been throughout the entire history of the world mm-hmm. because they are... Uh, so they are with adults and they are with their parents so little mm-hmm. in today's day and age, which he was saying that now kids are with their parents so much and that's a big problem. If you look at the current state of society, kids are gone. Kids are away from their parents almost all day, the vast majority yes. of the yes. year from, you know, 630 in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning until four or four thirty p.m. Just yeah, with your activities in the evenings and oh you get your quick dinner and you go to your activity and oh if you have multiple siblings then you're off at you know multiple different nights a week at different things mm-hmm. and yeah not that's not even yeah dipping into what you just said you know you're away from your parents from oh we drop off as at what I don't even know seven mm-hmm. seven thirty who knows and then yep. you pick them up but I don't even know three I have no idea yep. um, but I mean they're gone for that portion of the day and then you come home for a short period of time it's not even like you are being intentional with your child at that time a lot of times because mm-hmm. you have t- tons of homework that you need to do you need to get dinner quick whatever and then by the time you get home from activities you need to you know oh brush teeth bubble shower, shower yep. get him in bed whatever um that yeah it, it, it the amount of time that you are having with your parent as a child, is very is so 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 in, far right. less in, now in, in the average yes. in the average yes. child's life in America. Yes. Of course, there's exceptions like folks who homeschool, for yes. example, Amen. like 
like us where we are spending a lot of time with our children mm-hmm. because we recognize that that is something that's biblical yeah and that is something that we are called to as parents to bring up our own children in yep. the discipline and instruction of yep. the lord not have someone else bring up our children that we are the ones that are called to uh, uh, to be with them to teach them about the gospel to saturate them in the scriptures when they mm-hmm. wake up when they lie down when they walk by the way throughout the entirety of their day we're involved in a Uh, activity that we do with our uh, family, a sporting activity, a couple nights a week. Mm -hmm. And those kids, uh, the the other kids, hardly any other parents go to the activity and and observe and are involved in what the activity is. And um, so a, a lot of the kids, like you said, they get home from school, they quickly grab a snack, their parents just drop them off Mm -hmm. at this activity. They're away from them again Again. for multiple hours of training. Yeah. And and this is, once again, that is the norm. Mm -hmm. So of course we recognize, yes, there might be some outliers where there's some crazy helicopter parents that are literally with their children 100% of the day and Mm -hmm. they think that if I let my kid out of my sight, I'm not doing my duty or something bad's going to happen to no, him. That's not, that's not at all what we're talking about. By any means what we're saying. Yes. It is good for kids to occasionally go out and have time when they're playing with their siblings mm-hmm. or they're up in their room building yep. something or they're doing their music by themselves or practicing their sport uh, by themselves or with other children. We're not mm-hmm. saying that children should have zero time together. But if you look at the state of society, it's obvious mm-hmm. to anyone who is living in society well and who interacts with children on a regular basis i think that for most adults who interact with children on a you know decently regular basis their eyes are opened to seeing what children are like these days yes and you know whether it be at the stores or any other you know where your kids are interacting with other children whatever um I mean, I'm sure even at the, you know, at your local church and yes. other kids, I mean, not, it's not only unbelieving kids, mm-hmm. it can be Christian, you know, children, you know, you know, yes. And, um, kids that are often getting sent off. You're saying? Yes, yes. Yes. And, um, I, I don't know. I think that there's just, there, there is a clear difference with children now versus children from hundreds of years ago mm-hmm. and, or even hundred years ago, yes. even, you know, 80 years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, do we can even get down to the nitty gritty. What happened? Mm-hmm. And I mean, we've talked about this a lot, but a lot of it's the rise of civil government yes, education. Yes. Yep. And, and, and just the rise of, you know, technology. And again, mm-hmm. we love, we have phones, we have TVs, mm-hmm. we have laptops. We're we recording are, a podcast. We're recording right a now. podcast. <laughs> we're not anti-technology exactly. by any means, yes. but I think that just so much of the video game culture, mm-hmm. you know, on the rise too, that really, that that really can destroy children. Mm-hmm. I'm not just saying that lightly. The the way that children are, they the way that they act, mm-hmm. the way that they speak, the the way that they communicate, all of so much of that is is the rise mm-hmm. of this. You know, oh, send off your kid. You know, right. don't have him be by your parent. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, go ha- go watch a show. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, you're and that starts in when you're a toddler, right? Yes. I mean, oh, they just, uh, oh, I'm so stressed out from the day. Go have your kid watch a show. Mm-hmm. You know, just or to even get just, away from I'm gonna them. drop my kid off at this person's house or the birthday party. I'm gonna drop him off at the birthday yes. party. Yes, and then hardly no parents are around. There's 15 kids at the birthday party and only you know two parents, the parents of the kids whose yeah. birthday it is, and the host, who yeah. are there. And what that creates is this socialization among peers which is false socialization because Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. never how it is out in society you're never only around people who are exactly your same age and you're exactly uh, exact same life stage Mm -hmm. and it's children teaching each other Mm -hmm. rather than them having a parent who loves them and who uh, knows what's best for them and can point them towards wisdom yes. grabbing their hand and saying come along with me as I teach you and show you mm-hmm. how to live life for the glory of Christ yes, ideally with of intentionality Amen. yes so it, it, it's just very strange to me that uh, someone who says that he has you know degrees and everything could miss something so obvious that we're in a season where now more than ever children spend the least amount of time yes. as possible with adults yes. and adults can't wait to send kids mm-hmm. off. So I didn't really understand where that was coming from or th- that's one thing, you know, I kind of thought it was a Babylon B type thing at first because of how uh, just far <laughs> off it was from what was obvious. What about his comment uh, that 
uh, parents now have this irrational fear of kids being out of our sight. He was in, talking about in the context of danger mm-hmm. that uh, really, you know, the world's not that dangerous, that we just have these irrational fears. And that's why we never let kids go out and play because it's just these irrational fears. Yeah, yeah. When, when I heard that, I thought that he, I thought that he was in a bubble, that his eyes were blinded to what is happening to in reality. society. Yes. I'm sorry, but like, you, d- 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 does he just, maybe he's living in this, you know, oh, this some utopia of gated, life. Maybe a gated community yeah, and, with oh, security guards all over. Everything is just or, unbelievable and that there's no crime and, you know, there's no riots that are starting and there's no, you know, nutty trams Se- all over. And, there's no yeah. pedophile. Like, Again, not saying that we currently live in a city that is just rampant by any means, praise God, but but that that does happen, um, and that is oh, that is way more common um, now, you know, versus years ago, and. Um, and, and we, we, we discussed with your parents too, yes. you, know, you know. Oh, so how often, you know, did you get to go out and? ride your bike or go in the neighborhood or how, you know, when you got to leave and Mm -hmm. hang out and whatever. Yes. Back then you could go and you could explore and you could be away and Mm -hmm. whatever. And now, you know, you don't know if you're going to, your son or your daughter is going to get, you know, picked up from someone in a car Mm -hmm. and, you know, exactly. And, but his, he would say that the reason why we don't let our kids go out for you know four hours and say okay be back by night is just because we have this irrational fear <laughs> whereas you know in reality things are so things much more dangerous different. because you're living around so many different people yes. who do not share the same worldview as you yes amen. and you know a wickedness has been on the rise you you know you always say oh you used to know used to know everyone on your block mm-hmm. and they had, you know, similar enough parenting styles where you would know if your son Johnny did something wrong because, yes. you know, your neighbor Bill down the road is going to say, more Johnny, I saw trust. what you did. I'm going to, yes. you know, t- talk to your parents about that, whatever. Whereas now hardly anyone interacts with their neighbors mm-hmm. and you don't know what the worldview is of the people living right down the road. Mm-hmm. And what's very funny and ironic about this is literally, I think it was the day or two after this uh after you sent me this and after we listened to this our kids are uh, they made some new friends at a house uh maybe four doors down the road and they started playing baseball uh, with the kids and um i was doing a, a workout in the garage and they said oh yeah we're gonna play baseball with these friends out out in the street is that is that all right oh yeah yeah that's great yeah, i can see you right right down the road you're just four four doors down and i was playing with my my daughter uh, out outside in the front yard also. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm watching the kids and, and all of a sudden, uh, our kids come running back to us. And he says, one of, one of my sons says, daddy, this guy said, he's going to take me. This guy said, he's going to take me. Like, wait, wait, what, what, what's going on? So I see this guy riding in on this, uh, those motorcycle, motorized, those motorized, motorized scooter scooters. type thing. Yes. And I'm, wait, what? This seems a little strange because I'm literally four houses away, and mm-hmm. the the adult could clearly see that. And I saw, and I was out there talking on the phone, and yeah. you know, just even from afar, you know, across the grassy, seeing, yes. you know, oh, this this guy. I mean, he's like an adult, yes. some adult on yeah. a motorized scooter coming up to mm-hmm. you know four or five kids. Yeah, and he's you know? in a wife beater type uh, tank top, and he has a he has a lighter in his hand with a smoking device, and. He comes up and I'm thinking, oh, my, my son, you know, must have misunderstood something because this seems a little strange that did he really say he's going to take him? Anyway, it's a long story, but, you know, he comes up and he said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said, no, I, I said I was going to take the ball from him. And, you know, I was playing around because I love seeing kids play outside here. And, you know, I was going to um, I was going to tag him. And, oh, OK. And I introduced myself. He says he lives down the road. It's a little strange, you know, a little socially strange situation and you know mm-hmm. i can smell a foreign substance uh, on him from what he is uh allegedly smoking and then oh okay you know nice to meet you but i'm not trying to cause any problems okay yeah have, have a nice day our kids go back and they keep playing and the guy then comes and he starts playing baseball with them but literally i'm three i'm three houses away and i can see what's going on i think man this is really strange this is for this odd. older yes. adults to be playing, playing baseball with the mm-hmm. younger mm-hmm. younger kids but I don't want to cause anything um, as uh, a neighbor, you know, just kind of talk to the kids about it afterwards and move on. 
And then later on, we come, they come inside the house. And my son, my oldest son says, oh, yeah, so that guy, he asked us, he asked me if I wanted to go for a ride on his scooter. <laughs> and then he oh, asked, my. and then he looked at my other, and then my oldest son said, and then he looked at my other son, and he asked him brother. if he wants his to, brother. Yeah. his brother, he asked him if he wants to go for a ride on the scooter, and he said no. And then he looked at the neighbor, other neighbor kid and asked him, and he said no. And then he asked, looked at the other neighbor kid and asked him, and he said no. It's like, wait a second, what? Oh, this is so, crazy. You know, I went over and I talked to the to the parents to warn them of what's going on and how uh, sketchy the situation is. So long story just to say, you know, that is the world that we're dealing with. And yes. that's not a rare thing. No. There's always people, you know, walking around. It's like, what what's going on here? This seems mm. a little strange. Mm-hmm. There's... Um, odd things and we don't it's not like we live in a very dangerous neighborhood no you know? no so uh, by any means what, whatsoever <laughs> by any means, yeah so th- th- for this uh, guy you know to make the full circle for this person on the morning wire to say that we have this irrational fear mm-hmm. he it seems like just like you said he must be living in some bubble some ultra gated community and some you know with security all around because in the real world there is danger mm-hmm all around and we would be unwise and we would not be glorifying God if we just had this mindset of nothing bad is ever going to happen so I'm just going to let my kid roam around for for four hours and say Mm -hmm. see you before it gets dark yeah and and, I mean that's just like straight ignorance right like being so ignorant to thinking that anything you know could go wrong and again I mean there could be two ditches right one side is you're being you know completely ignorant to you know what what I go oh Mm -hmm. I have no idea what oh what this guy Mm with he just wants to play with the kids Mm -hmm. you know and then there could be the other ditch of oh oh my Mm -hmm. (laughs) every single person every single thing and you freak out about every single thing and you never oh get those leashes for your kids and you know go crazy so that you know there's two sides and you know there's a a beautiful healthy medium and yet still Getting back to, you know, Christ, obviously, mm-hmm. trusting the Lord, trusting the yes. Lord ultimately with your children. We are not going to be able to perfectly love and protect our kids. Mm-hmm. And um, and there's just a great and so necessary aspect of just running to the Lord and mm-hmm. trusting him and knowing that he is sovereign over whatever may happen. Yes. But yet, how can we be wise as parents and train them and love them and protect them and um, and all of that in yes. in the culture that we're living in? Amen. Yeah, we need to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves, as, mm-hmm. as the scriptures teach. And just to say that we have this irrational fear, I'm not saying that, yes, it's true that some people might have that. You know, yes. once again, the people with yes. leashes who walk their kids around the neighborhood in leashes, that, that that would be something that is in the category of an irrational fear. Yeah. But uh, also to not be aware of what's going on in society mm-hmm. and the dangers that there are for children is just very ignorant. So I thought it was very strange that that, mm-hmm. that uh, type of stuff was being promoted. But ultimately, like you said, yes, we need to trust the Lord that um, he is going to take care of our kids, but he's going to use our wise parenting mm-hmm. to, to mm-hmm. do so as well as the means. And then when he said, parents believe now it's their job to teach their children as if that was, as if that's something that is bad, uh, very, you know, really hit both of us as extremely strange because it is the parent's job to, to teach their children. Yes. And as you see, as you understand the gospel of Jesus Christ more and more, God is called our father. Mm-hmm. in the gospel mm-hmm. you know to to us who did receive jesus christ who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of god mm-hmm. so we are god's children and how you think the father is relates to you in the gospel is what you're going to think your responsibility is to your own children mm-hmm. so if you say oh yeah you know it's not really my responsibility to teach my kids well then you're revealing how you think God treats you in the gospel that you don't really think the father really teaches you. Mm. But when you understand more and more that the good news is that yes, our sins have been taken away by Christ and we've been set free uh, from Satan, sin and death, and he's renewing all things. And we are included in that. We're going to be resurrected on the last day uh, so that we can, and we can live with God forever. Mm -hmm. All of that is the good news. But it's also good news that we have a father now who teaches us and who trains us and mm-hmm. who loves to be around us 
and who loves to walk through as much as possible with us yes. and guide us into sanctification and maturity. Mm -hmm. And when we understand that, that's what we're going to want to do as parents. We're not going to want to ship that off to other people. No, amen. And, and he's teaching us and training us so much. Yes. It's not just, oh, you know, 10 minutes here or there, mm -hmm. you know, oh, he did it for, you know, when I was, you know, X amount of eight, whatever yes. age. No, he's always and continually teaching and training us. And that's the, that's what the Christian life is, yes. is, a, you know, growth and sanctification in the Lord. And it's not, it's not done, you Amen. know? Um, and, and as you see the scriptures, you know, uh, fathers do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the enculturation of the Lord, you know, the uh, discipline and instruction, the, the word there is paideia. It's this mm -hmm. entire culture of the Lord. That's what parents are to be bringing their children up in. Mm -hmm. And if you read the scriptures, you won't see a call to for children to be raised by any others other than their parents. You're mm -hmm. not going to see we're not saying once again it's wrong to have occasional times of delegation no, where the kids no. are being taught by other people by any means whatsoever any means, but yes. you won't see in scripture a command for uh you know make sure children are spending a lot of time with peers mm -hmm. you know uh, while well, you're sinning if if your kids aren't uh, spending at least x amount of time with peers their same age without adults present no that's <laughs> that's foreign from the bible and we need to be set free from the spirit of the age that so often has even in, impacted the church in so many ways mm -hmm. and has certainly impacted these, you know, so many of these podcasts and psychologists, sociologists, whatever. We need to be set free from that. In Christ, we are set free to see the beauty of the truth of Scripture that kids need not a lot of independent time. They need, time, they need their parents to guide them and mm -hmm. to train them and to disciple them mm -hmm. into Christian maturity. No, I meant, again... I 100% agree with everything you just said, but just to call out for all the people that are going to rip on this, <laughs> you know, we love independent playtime. Yes. We love some independent playtime. Yes. And that what, is, what does that look like? What would you say? Well, I mean, again, that can look at uh, different for, at, for all ages mm -hmm. when they're even little, they can, Oh, have sweet independent playtime on their blankie and they're playing with their little yes, toys their as little a toddler. So, I mean, that and, is a yes. great thing. And I, I'm all for that mm -hmm. and exploration, whatever. But I mean, even our own children have tons of independent playtime, whether that be, I mean, you dipped it a little bit, but even, just oh upstairs playing with legos mm -hmm. or building a in puzzle the in the backyard and yeah or yeah yeah it could be it could be anything reading. oh they're playing the piano or they're reading and you know again before that instant that just happened mm -hmm. we would you know we would have let them play outside you know and play in the grassy just by mm -hmm. themselves but now it's a, a little more a, cautious a little a little sketch situation here on. but yeah. you know even our wonderful backyard they can play outside play sports. whatever and it's not that i am with them uh, and in all in their rooms and uh, you know throughout the home all the time. Yes, there are um, amazing seasons of togetherness and intentionality, but we also do have lots of um, independent playtime. You know, f f at times too. Exactly. So, it, but once again, the the thing with this um, podcast was that he's talking about. He was saying that the general culture, yes, is that kids kids in general in America need less independent time and to me and to you also you know we were both just you didn't even share your thoughts with me we just both clearly came to the same conclusion after that uh, it's actually the exact opposite in american society kids need to be guided more by wise adults who know the scriptures and who love christ and who can train them uh, to love christ and train their hearts in affection for christ and train mm -hmm. their actions mm -hmm to uh, be kind like Christ and to be uh, gospel influences on the world. We don't need more time with each other to uh, continue to delve deeper and deeper into foolishness and into uh, a lack of understanding of what the scriptures teach and the gospel liberty that comes with knowing Christ. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Gospel Liberty Podcast.